Hey guys, this is JB from August Burns Red, and this is the track by track for our new EP, Guardian Sessions. Um, Guardian Sessions came to be when we had a couple songs left over from the Guardians recording session, and um, those two songs were Standing in the Storm and Icarus, which we cut from the record. Um, but we liked the songs and we wanted them to get released, uh, but we also didn't want to necessarily just put out a two song EP and release them as standalone singles. So while we were um, in quarantine during COVID uh, last summer, we started to put together more and more tracks. And then we did a couple of weeks in the studio in June and banged them all out. And that's, that's where they came. Uh, that's how they came to be. Sandy in the Storm was one of my favorite songs musically on Guardians. Uh, it was the third song I had written for that record. And I really liked the way it came out musically. Um, it was actually based on a, I, I based like the main progression off of uh, a riff that I had heard the band Caspian play, which is, uh, you know, they're a post-rock band. I saw them open up for Minus the Bear on Minus the Bear's Farewell Tour. And I remember them playing this one, this one section that just stood with me. I'd never heard the song before, but it was like, it was really crushing live. And I, it just stuck in my head. And I kind of used that as inspiration to write the main, you know, uh, chord progression or whatever, I guess, in Sandy in the Storm. And the rest of the song um, flowed out from there. But after we had recorded the whole record, uh, the whole album Guardians, Standing in the Storm kind of felt like an oddball track for the rest of the record. It, it just had a different mood and didn't really fit the vibe. And we had too many songs, so a couple of them had to get get bumped. But uh, I'm, I'm very fond of the track, but I get why it didn't make sense on the Guardian's full length. Icarus was uh, another song similar to Standing in the Storm that just didn't fit the vibe of Guardians as a whole. It's the it's the most upbeat and happy sounding song on the whole album. It's not very heavy at all. Um, it's very guitar riffy, um, but it, it felt like it didn't have a place on the record. So it, it didn't make it, but uh, that was a song that was primarily written by our bass player, Dustin. Um, he wrote a, a good, a good bulk of it, but got kind of stuck on some sections while we were on tour during our constellations 10 year anniversary tour in the summer of 2019. And that was actually a song that we collaborated on to finish up. I remember sitting in the back lounge with him on a couple off days on that tour, um, flushing out riff ideas and working on leads and stuff. And then, you know, we were, we were tracking the song in the studio and our singer Jake goes, what am I supposed to do with this song? But like, this is such a, this doesn't sound like an August Burns Red song. And it is very, uh, like I was saying, it's just not a very heavy song and it's, it's major and sounds pretty happy. Um, so there was a little bit of a challenge for Jake to sort of find his vocal inspiration for it. But I think it's a cool song. I'm, I'm happy to, to share it with everyone. And I definitely like, I, I feel like it was worth recording and, and putting out there. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that Standing in the Storm and Icarus are good representations of the band moving forward in that direction. Those weren't necessarily the last songs written for Guardians. They were just in the, you know, they they were in that timeline. Um, but I, I don't think that fans should expect that to be a new sound or direction that the band is moving in. We're just, they're just songs that we wrote that didn't have a home on Guardians. And uh, if you like them, cool. If you don't, that's fine too. Don't expect us to write an album of Icarus sounding songs. That's, that's not the direction we're moving in, in case you were wondering. All right, so Chop Suey was a song that we've been playing right before we take the stage for years now. It's, it's sort of like our, it's the last song before the show begins. And our fans who have seen us many times have come to know this and it always gets the crowd really hyped up and sets the it sets a good tone gets everyone singing together and during quarantine i said to the guys like we should just cover chop suey we should do a cover of it our fans would love it we've been playing it before our our shows anyways and it would be fun for jake to do something different vocally and get to sing a little so we put that song together it wasn't uh terribly time consuming it's a pretty simple song um all things considered and 
I think Jake killed it on vocals. I don't think people were expecting him to be able to sing like that. I, I honestly didn't think he'd be able to sing like that myself. And when I first heard him come out of the studio and hear the, the first rough mixes of him singing, it's like, whoa, this is like way better than I was expecting. So Chop Suey just felt like a really, it, it was kind of a, a fun project for us to take that song on. And I know that our fans appreciate it um, just from the history we have with at our at, at our live shows. I think my biggest nerves with regards to Chop Suey were how the vocals were going to come out because it is a vocally driven song. And oftentimes August Burns Red Material is, is more driven by the riffs and we just add vocals on top of these intricate instrumental songs that we write. Um, but Chop Suey is definitely written for the vocals and Serge has such an iconic voice and so does Darren. Um, and System of a Down has a very distinct sound. So I knew that, I'm sure not everyone likes it. And some people are probably like, why did August Burns Red try to do that track? Like they totally butchered it. But um, I'm really proud of how it came out. And I, I, whether or not you like our cover, um, I don't think that we, I don't think we butchered it. Like, I don't think there's um, room for people to say that we completely butchered it, but I totally get if someone says, I wish they wouldn't have touched that, that song's, you know, off limits. So sorry to anyone who feels that way. The Westworld cover started back in 2018, actually. We had just finished up recording the Winter Wilderness EP. Um, and I had a little bit of extra time and was just working at transposing the intro, um, the theme song to that show, Westworld, which the first season of Westworld is one of my all time favorite seasons of television ever. Um, and I always loved the music on that show and the soundtrack is really awesome. The intro is, is such an epic song. So I had started it and then it got pushed to the background for a really long time. And then COVID hit, we got sent home from tour in March. And that was the first thing that I started working on again, working on again when I was back at home and just, you know, we were just in lockdown. So it was cool to actually have the time to finish it because I don't know when I would have devoted time to work on that otherwise. Um, but what I really like about the song is how it combines the intro and then also the, the, the Sweetwater theme, which if you've seen the show, the Sweetwater is the, the main town in Westworld. Um, it's kind of like a saloony Western city. So I like how it mashes up a couple different elements of the soundtrack. And I'm hoping that people who don't know the actual song can still appreciate it as a cool metal instrumental song. But I definitely recommend anyone to check out the original because the entire soundtrack is, is really wild and awesome. Um, from time to time, we do these reprise tracks where we take songs that we've done and we reimagine them, usually uh, acoustically driven for the guitars. And we like to layer in lots of different um, instrumentation that we normally wouldn't use in August Burns Red music. Just completely reimagine the tracks. Um, Paramount was one that we chose to do for Guardian Sessions because the song has a lot of melody in it. Um, and it was a pretty popular song with our fans. So we thought it would be a good choice to give, you know, the, a, a reimagining to. Generally, when we do these sorts of, of tracks, we like to pick stuff that is more on the melodic side and has more, that's, that's to say like a, a song like our track Blood Letter wouldn't necessarily be a great song for us to redo um, as an acoustic driven reprise, simply because it's a lot of just open breakdowns and stuff. So we'd like to find songs that have a little bit more uh, melodic depth to them. And that was certainly the motivating factor in choosing Paramount. The process of creating these reprise tracks is very on the fly. What we do first is we, we track all the rhythm guitars acoustically. And then once we have that foundation set, we start to look at each section at a time and just build each section um, we just build it out. So if there's a lead in the section, we will say, okay, do we want to retract this with a new clean guitar tone? Or do we want to pick a completely different instrument altogether, like a violin or piano or some Middle Eastern sounding instrument? Yeah, whatever. We, we, we take each section up and slowly build them out 
and then we'll do the same as we go through the whole song and then we will listen back and go oh you know what this part into this part doesn't sound like it transitions well we need to do something here and it's it's a very uh it's it's very in the moment which is cool because generally speaking august burns red is we're very calculated and everything's premeditated but when we get to reimagine these songs, it's definitely a collaboration in the studio. Um, and honestly, there's usually not like a focus in mind when we start one of these tracks. It's just sort of, uh, it's, it's born through the process. We chose Extinct by Instinct um, because it was, D Dustin and I are bass player um, who now handles a lot of the songwriting with me. We, we both wrote about half of the last record and I had written Paramount. And we wanted to do a, a reprise track of uh, a song that Dustin had written. And Extinct by Instinct was one of the more progressive songs on the record. It was actually uh, my favorite song on the record. So I was really excited about doing a, a new version of it. And uh, Dustin recorded all of the leads. Um, he re-recorded all the leads on clean guitar and that was along with the acoustic you know rhythm guitars was the foundation but then we worked with our producer uh grant mcfarlane who was who's working on that song with us he he was pretty helpful in kind of driving more of like this world music sort of sound with uh extinct by instinct we we dove into a lot of middle eastern sounding instruments and stuff that we've never dabbled in before and it's it's crazy what you can do with uh, MIDI samples and stuff now. Um, that like if you can imagine a sound, you can find it and make it sound awesome. So um, I feel grateful that I'm living in an era where technology has come so far, music production, because a lot of the instruments and stuff that we used on that song, if they had to have been recorded by someone coming into the studio and knowing how to play that instrument, we would have never been able to achieve what we got with Extinct by Instinct, but um, MIDI programming, <laughs> you can do almost anything nowadays. Yeah, definitely having a lot of time at home has given us the opportunity to write music, think about what's coming next and do projects that we never would have taken on normally. Um, I don't think the Guardian Sessions EP necessarily would have been a thing if touring had resumed or continued on um, as we had planned it. We had a really busy year planned around the release of Guardians and when that all went away, um, we've, we've had to find cre creative ways to stay busy. So yeah, we're always thinking about new music. There's stuff in the works. Uh, I don't know when there will be a new album, but, um, we're definitely not sitting idly at home, even though we're at home. 